Hello, this is Warpath, today Fire speaking, and today's second day of the 12 days of war, <clears throat> as we're discussing, the G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, 1992, Cobra Parasite. Now, the Cobra Parasite is a, <clears throat> a strange little vehicle, and it's one of only, I believe, six Cobra APCs that exist, or general armor personnel carriers. You know, your his DTCs, your Cobra Parasites, and I believe the Ring Nick also technically counts, even though it has no space in the rear, but it's technically applied to be hit APC. Now, the Parasite is quite interesting since it's another one of those oop, that fell, <laughs> and I'll pack it up later, or more or less, I have a spare. <clears throat> Anyways. <clears throat> the Cobra Perse is one of those uh, 90s Cobra vehicles where it has a bunch of neon colors and strange amounts of purple. Like, the 90s Cobra vehicles have purple on them. And Cobra Troopers in general had that Cobra purple. It's, like it's not particularly notable purple, it's just a Cobra purple, as I best to describe it. It's weird. But. It also has tons of sticker details to replicate, well, a tick. Because the Cobra APC is technically supposed to be a tick. I'm not joking. That's literally a tick. And if we can zoom in on there. There you go. Yeah, that's literally a tick. Which is why I call the Cobra Parasites. Ticks are technically parasites. Also, even the positioning of the general turrets also reminds me of that of a tick. If I can just maneuver it. Can I, can I actually do that? Or you can just... There we go. General placement of a tick's mandibles. And yes, ticks do have mandibles. <laughs> Rackonites are weird. But anyways, for general features, or visual features, for toy size play features, it has a jointed, per se, turret. So that's driver seat where it can move a little bit, uh, like almost, I want to say, it's not 60 degrees, but at least like a 90, almost a 90 degrees. And has two laser cannons on the chin, or both chin ones and the laser cannon, twin, quad, I'm taking a quad, this is two barrels on both of them. And a quad fitted caliber turret on top, and has some nice computer details right here, and some, uh, <clears throat> handles for the figure to hold on to, which I'll get to that later. Other features is this, I can focus on that. There you go. A rear mounted minigun. <clears throat> Fancy stuff. And a catapult, which is a reuse of this, the incinerator's catapult in general structure and playability because it also has the same block as the uh, catapult from the incinerators and the same general <clears throat> cage technically and its general setup. Also wasn't the only one because I think it was also used on I think it was General Flag or General Hawk. Can't remember. Um or talking about General Flag's son. Let me just lock it in. I'm mostly just showing this out to show you like how it actually works because if you don't know, all copies of the parasite have the rubber band brought it away. So we just lock it in with this lock and it should launch. But you have to hold it up like this for it to even work. I think you have to just like do this. There you go. So that's how basically the general catapult works for the parasite. But for some reason, the parasites, burr bands may have lesser quality, and thus all of them are brought away, like I said earlier. But somehow, Incineroar is the one that came out like a year earlier, still works, and still very elastic. But I don't want to be pushing that f too far, because, well, <laughs> it is like almost a 30 year old. Actually, yeah, it is basically a 30 year old um, band. <laughs> Um, for other general features, it can roll nicely. 
It also has crew compartments. Let me just remove this mind over here. Mm, I can hit plug onto. There. Oops. Oh my. A sticker has just fallen off. And that sucks. I'll probably just put it back on with a dab of glue. But yeah. Has six seats inside. Let's open it up again. Yeah, some little more room. Probably put the weapons in there. Some fun stuff. And for other general gimmicks, this general course is APC can hold up to 17 figures. Bordering 70 figures. How come? Because each individual foot peg is recommended to have one figure, for example, this incinerator, on them. However, it doesn't mean quite work because one of the figures advertised on the general artwork, but it's supposed over here, is the Cobra Fact Viper, which has a massive bazooka missile launcher backpack thing. G.I. Joe from the 90s is weird. But also, it's advertised to have Destro in the driver's seat. And I'll start to get to the general specifics of the vehicle's driver, designated driver. Because on the artwork, it was advertised to have Destro. I was representing by the 50th version of Destro because I don't have the version 3 Destro. Yes, yeah, version 3 because Iron Green Deers exist. There you go. But its actual designated driver was the version 2 uh, Alley Viper, represented by the Retaliation one because I don't have the version 2 Alley Viper. Which is. Kind of doesn't make that much sense, but also is fine or almost really good for modern figures to fit in there because if you don't know, this gesture is all leg. So I'm never going to try to fit him in there, but this retaliation alley viper can fit in there nicely. Let me just pose him up. Like so. And he can just sit in there, like so, just like his vintage counterpart. And you can also, if you have it, um, use the version one alley vapor or any alley vapor if they have like a small enough general web gear attachments. If it's like modern versions, especially the uh, versions with the. Uh, 20th anniversary style ones with the massive body armor. Of course, you can't fit the backpacks and the accessories in there because you can't really quite fit. But yeah, there's foot pegs on the sides, and you can see a figure over there, like I said earlier. There's two foot pegs on the back, and four more on the other side. There's these gears moving again. There we go. And that's all the general place for use for this vehicle for general comparisons with other Cobra vehicles. If I can technically zoom this figure, reverse the camera out a little more. I don't think I can. Because my general positioning is very limited. Or my stance. Here's a vintage 1988, I believe, Cobra Imp. Because we just came a year after the adder, right? Yes, it did. Put this back on my shelf. A Cobra Ice Cutter. A modern Cobra vehicle, also relatively small. This is supposed to take its place for the Parasite spot, but I didn't get this until like, a, like yesterday. So yeah, that's... <laughs> um, a tiny mistake on my part, but that kind of happens. And I would like to show off the Cobra... Adder, but that's on top of my shelf, so I guess I'll just use this Pursuit of a Cobra His tank to show off. This thing is quite long Or more or less large if I can just get my camera off here I might do a small cut and here they are and as you can see And for those who also own the Cobra Pursuit of a Cobra version of the His tank or the technically His 5, but I technically call this His 6 because the GCC one exists I don't know why they forgot about the DTC one, but it did. But numbering stakes aside, you can tell that, yeah, this thing's pretty large and very long. I originally thought it was going to be like the size of 
the his tank or at least a vintage chest tank in size but no it's literally the same size as that his tank from uh, Super Cobra and also the uh, shockwave and the retaliation version because it uses similar chassis and I guess is all for uh, this uh, video and hopefully this comes out for day two probably not since right now I'm filling it on day two timing man timing is very sucky for people who are watching this who are still have a little bit more time in their young lives please <laughs> make sure to have a schedule for your adulthood or whatever I think I'm going to be until I'm 18, whatever. <clears throat> Besides that, I'll see you for day three of the 12 days of war. <laughs> I guess like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I think that's all I have to say. Yeah. See you there. Bye.